Welcome to another RMS support tutorial. Today we will discuss how to add contractors on site in RMS. Now let's get started. We will begin in the contract menu. Navigate to the contractors on site module. This module shows a list of all of the contractors from the subcontractors module as well as display their first and last days on site. If the contractor does not populate within RMS, please coordinate with your government representative and add the appropriate subcontractors at any time. For more information on how to add a subcontractor to the contract, please see the link in the description box below. At the top, the blue sorting tiles allow all contractors to be sorted by those on-site and not on-site. On-site contractors will have a first day entry. Not on-site contractors will lack a first day entry. Clicking in the first day and last day rows will allow a date to be entered manually or by selecting the grid icon to choose a day from the calendar view. For this demonstration, we will add the first and last days for Tough 10 Enterprise Contractor. Click on the first day column. Then click the grid icon to display the calendar view. Select the appropriate date, then do the same for the last day. Once we have entered this information, we can see the contractor's not on site filter change from 1 to 0. This date is used in conjunction with the payroll week ending day to automatically generate one payroll per week for each subcontractor while those subcontractors are on site. To set the ending date for a subcontractor, click the contract menu and navigate to the subcontractor module. Double click the contractor, Tough 10 Enterprise, to edit. Here we can see a drop down window indicating the payroll's ending day of week. By clicking the arrow, we can make a change to the date. In this case, we will change the payroll ending day of week to Saturday instead of Sunday. Payroll week ending days are required to be selected and not left blank. By checking the use end last day payroll end override, the date entered in the last day column will end payroll even if the day is not within the ending day of week as previously selected. For this demonstration, we will leave this unchecked. If a first day on site is not entered for either the prime contractor or subcontractor, those payrolls will not generate in RMS. Properly setting the payroll required and payroll week ending date when the subcontractor record is created is critical to the proper operation of the payroll module. To set the payroll ending date for the prime contractor, click the contract menu button and navigate to the prime contractor module. If we scroll down, we can enter the payroll's ending day of week and have the option to select the use last day as payroll end override. This particular prime contractor's payroll ends on Sunday. Now click the back button to save the changes. In summary, we went over how to add contractors on site, as well as how to set payroll ending days a week for both subcontractors and prime contractors. As a reminder, once the contractors on site information has been added, RMS should automatically calculate payroll information. The date entered will affect how payroll is calculated. If there are any technical issues that occur within RMS while attempting to add contractors on site, please contact the RMS Support Help Desk by submitting a support ticket. Links to our contact information will be provided in the description of this video. We hope you found this video informative and thank you for watching.